Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave and happy Sunday to you everyone out there in cryptocurrency land. I'm in a lack of sleep, so I'm really, really struggling this morning. But you know what? I'm wishing the happiest of Sundays possible. Wherever you might be in this world, wherever church you might be praying to today or temple or whatever it might be, you know what? We can all believe in Go Jesus because he is the one true Lord and Savior. So let's get into the live scene right over here. We'll be talking about a little bit of uh, short-term ideas, a little bit of long-term ideas as well. So when it comes down to it, as always, I know this is boring. I sound like a broken record, but this is very important. 6150 is long long as you're above there can't really be too damn bearish and when I say too damn bearish I mean like having you know super big shorts on looking for looking for those nice big breakdowns but that also offers up the counterpoint to hey if we do break 6150 6100 on a daily total time frame well that's the point where I do start to get pretty damn bearish and I don't and I don't mean just saying going to like you know 6000 and then 5800 no I mean like uh, 4500 you know those, those sorts of numbers um, but hey as long as you're above there you know I uh, Bitcoin does have I mean it's just not appropriate to really even be positioning myself in those ways however we will be talking about some uh, some higher term time frame ideas and what's going on over here so anyways this smaller descending triangle that bitcoin had been living in for the past three months did technically get broken out to the upside right over here again i know it's not a broken record like this but again very very important because this is this is extremely important to understand the overall story of Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin did put in a descending triangle right here, a small one, and it did technically break it out to the upside. But this is not necessarily a break that you're looking for. You want to see like a major fucking, you know, dildo right in your face with extremely heavy volume, you know, in, in indicative of huge of huge agreement in the market, huge conviction in the market, and then we can move on in a, in a singular direction. Well, maybe not singular direction, but you know, there there will actually be a change in the market phase. Uh, right here, right now, we have indecision is what it looks like to me. So we've been going sideways for about a couple weeks now, and at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, you know, we have something new going on is what this tells me. There is no conviction in either which way. Yes, there was a rally tried to the upside over here, but didn't take out any of the critical areas. Again, the critical area essentially right now would be, I guess, tentatively speaking, about 6,600-ish area or right around there. Also, your daily 100 uh, exponential, which is you, you you notice that each and every day, like, you know, it comes down just a few more dollars, a few more dollars. So, uh, so, it, so that does kind of offer up a little bit of perspective on how these things do come Kind of smooth out over time um but even that you know that would be a change behavior just because that would be the overall downtrend resistance line which bitcoin has been living under for the past you know 11 oh you know jesus christ more than 11 months now um which is you know it's very very significant uh meeting right right at the intersection of all these points right over here so very very important when it comes down to that now is it important because i look at this as a descending triangle or as a falling wedge not really um i don't really look at it as either it's again it's not either in my opinion i think that we have something new going on but if you were to get above this area that is not trading above you know in the past 11 months well that would be pretty significant in my book um is it uh, is it the is it the final straw that i need to see no it's not there are several steps on the ladder to success or the steps to success or whatever you want to call it the wall of worry um we got this guy right over here 6750 not a strong one but but an important one as this does kind of denote our past um accumulation phase over here in this in this big try that really try th this really this rally over here really did have a chance to kind of bring back uh, bitcoin back from the dead jesus christ man you can see that i'm struggling with my words already i apologize about that thank you for <laughs> thank you for bearing with me over here no pun intended but when it comes down to it you know if you could get above there, not again, not the final straw, just another step on the on the ladder. Uh, this guy over here, uh, uh, kind of coming in at around the seven thousand level, would be a good level as well as you, as we haven't gone above the two hundred exponential and two hundred simple. These moving averages right here for quite some time as well, ever since uh, March of la uh, of this year, March of this year, we have not gotten into twenty eighteen just yet. But overall, you know, again, not the major area that I need to be seen. Once we start making higher highs above seventy three fifty, that's where I really start to consider ideas of. Okay, well, could it be that Bitcoin is bottomed? Could it be that Bitcoin is not going lower than 6,000? It becomes a lot more of a likelihood at that point. Uh, above here, above about 8,000, a uh, very likelihood. And above 10,000 would be, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I would say that that's, it, it's no longer in the back of my mind. I'm just looking for a prolonged, you know, upside, get, you know, as long as, as long as like Bitcoin doesn't be declared, I don't know, dead. I don't know. People have already said dead, right? But, you know, 
know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe someone started like a psychological warfare on all Bitcoin um, people in the world. So again, when it comes down to it, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of things need to happen. And that's really what I want to get out here. A lot of things need to happen. Uh, everyone gets very excited about you know a two hundred dollar move over here, two hundred dollar move over here. But at the end of the day, has anything really changed from the higher time frames? No. And the fact is, is that uh, Bitcoin has lost the yellow twenty one exponential on the daily time frame right over here. And even yesterday, actually, I do count this as a test right here. This uh, this little wick to the upside um, pointing north towards uh, the 21 exponential right around 63.90 a share. And we spoke about that during yesterday's um, during, uh, during yesterday's video, how it's likely to kind of test that area. If it fails that area, then very likely that we will find ourselves under pressure once again. So let's go down to the lower time frame to see what this could look like over here um, and plot out some nice horizontals. We got this guy right here, 62.50, but that's not too relevant right now. Bitcoin's in such a tight range that we really got to get super, <laughs> super into it right over here. Okay, so 63.30 is our kind of uh, more preliminary support. Again, not these are not strong areas, but they are tradable areas. Uh, believe it or not, we are at that point where Bitcoin is in such a tight range that you know all these uh, all these little things are are, are tradable. Actually, um, we have this area right over here. I can see uh, 64.40, and this is more like a zone, right? This is more like a little bit of a zone. Yeah, we got 64.60 to 64.40. This kind of uh, zone right there, denoting you know as long as you're below there. A little bit more under pressure than anything. You know, Bitcoin could even rally all the way up to 6440s, and uh, and if it rejects from there, it'd, be, it'd still be. Uh, it just wouldn't have changed anything. And here's the thing with with the way that this chart looks over here. You'll see that this is the four hour time frame, right? And the four hour time frame was damn near. Uh, right here, the green 55 crossing the upside of the purple 200. And right when it was, you know, pretty, um, when, when it was becoming very, very likely, I mean, it probably needed like another 50 to hundred dollar rally, you know, don't get me wrong. It needed to do some work, but it was getting likely, um, you know, where, what comes out of nowhere? Well, fucking bear Jesus with his red dildos in both hands and pointing them right in your bullish face. So when it comes down to it, you know, I'm looking back in history over here and we really haven't gotten golden cross on the four hour in a long time. So to me, that's a very indicative thing of the pressure in this market averting a, a an exponential move and average cross like that the golden cross on the four hour again this was the only other time you've had it before that or the only other time jesus christ there's been plenty of times in bitcoin's history but this was this was the time before that catching you a nice run over here but this this just was a bull trap the whole way through i mean you had major bearish divergence going all the way through which you actually did over here as well to be to be fair uh, you, you did over here as well um but hey, you still got to move even after you got the golden cross over there. On this one over here, again, as we said before, that you know th th this whole move right here really could have been Bitcoin's. Uh, that 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 really did look like an impressive, um, uh, impulsive move that could have dug Bitcoin out of its uh, rut. Again, failed. You know, major bearish divergence going all the way through. But you did get that golden cross right over here, getting you an another two thousand dollar run. Um, you know, same thing right over here uh, from about uh, what was it, eight thousand to ten thousand almost, and. I mean, before that, it it actually been a while, I believe. Uh, yeah, in 20, uh, 2017, the year prior. So again, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, to me, th this was quite nasty indeed. Um, now, overall, we're gonna go, we're gonna put these back on, and let's kind of talk about what you know, what what's likely to happen in here. This is kind of a range of fox, so to say. But hey, as long as you're kind of using the 200 exponential and living below the 200 exponential, you're not gonna get that golden cross the upside. So as long as you're as long as you're below there, yes, I am a little bit short term bearish. But is this, you know, is is that? That's kind of a talking point more than anything because there's just not much edge on trades right now. I'm not trading spot underline. All I'm doing is I'm trading options over here. Again, I, I, I try to be as open and honest with um, I try to be as open and honest. I'm open and honest with my positions over here is what I is what I do because I think it's important to verify myself as you know no one else really shows their trades or anything like that. Um, not because they're like bad people or anything like that, but typically because they don't you know actually trade. Uh, but what but but what I actually have done over here and this is a very small position. This is my streamer account actually. Um, but I basically have a very fucked up strangle on in a way, like uh, the most fucked up strength. Like the <laughs> people, people who actually know options are, th are looking at the same crown. What the fuck, what the fuck are you talking about a strangle? I basically, <laughs> I basically have a version, a very bastardized version of a strangle going on as I was selling a lot of the premium from these six, seven fifties and 7,000 strikes, uh, a couple weeks ago when they were much higher. Um, and then kind of moving it down as the premium decays and then have a little bit of a put spread on in the 6,000 because I am leaning a little bit to the downside. I want to protect myself to the downside, but a very easy position to kind of cover nonetheless. Um, 
and uh, still kind of pulling the profit. So again, you guys have been watching the the P and L. This guy just you know slowly, slowly go up. That's you know that's the beauty of options. You can just sit back, have a pretty you know, easy day. I mean, not think about this too much. Again, this is, this is really only about, you know, almost 20,000 contracts cumulatively. That's nothing, I guess 30, if you had these long puts, but that's, you know, fuck them. They, they, they're worthless. They're going to expire worthless. They, they, they probably aren't going to be worth anything. Um, but when it comes down to it, you know, these are very small positions. So that is the power of options. Um, you know, really in, in, in a main account, you know, you really, <laughs> you know, you could get up to like 50 on both sides and then you're doing a hundred options. Um, and that just multiplies it, you know, another five fold. So when it comes down to it, you know, if you want to learn how to do options, uh, definitely check out the link in the description of this video, the options program, not trying to fucking, I always feel so dirty when I show myself, but you know, I'm terrible, I'm terrible about talking about, uh, about my own self, but I should say that, Hey, um, you know, it's one of those programs where, Hey, you really have to be super dedicated to understanding the material, because if you're not really coming in with a prior knowledge of options, you're going to have to go through all of the introductory modules and to, to kind of get you up to speed, which people actually have been getting through them really, really fast. They got through it faster than, than I did myself when I first started. Um, so that's that's really good uh but again you know there's a learning curve is what i want to get out there so it's not like uh as immediately actionable as a technical analysis program not that that's you know immediately actionable either i think that you know you should really go through the base of the program first before starting to apply these things but again you know experience is important as well but you know just getting that out there um that's the important part of course there is a discount for the uh for the rest of this month okay anyways enough about that jesus christ man jesus fucking christ let's get into the goddamn analysis over here so again as long as you're living below the 200 exponential on the four hour just as like a tentative thing i'd say i'm generally gonna be short term a uh, little bit leaning to the downside but again it's like is there that much edge on these trades not really uh if you do break 6330 where's your next support well right over here right around 6250 ish area um you will have one right over here actually as well right around 62.75 i mean you can i mean the, the, this is the right way to be doing things right now it's just that the ranges are that tight and i know and i understand that this is very frustrating for for actual spot traders over there that's why i do that's why i'm doing options right now so i don't have to you know get those massive you know 500 dollars dildos which bitcoin just hasn't had in in uh months now months so again if this area were to break 6250 that's where things start to get a little bit more interesting to me as uh, 6150 again is kind of like that last line of defense if bitcoin were to break 6150 obviously we could talk about some more uh, some more ideas down around there um overall though you know if bitcoin could break back above uh 6460 don't really see much stopping it from the overall downtrend resistance line which is now coming in around you know current price action around 6550 or a little bit above that about 6569 on uh, gdax over here and again uh, adjust for exchange um, um, you know, obviously, if you're going to be using Bitfinex, it's not going to be very actionable uh, right here because Bitfinex is on its own fucking world. Um, anyways, uh, let's go over the uh, let's go over some of our oscillators over here. Uh, four hour time frame, Stokes are kind of going up and they're and they're gaining momentum to the upside. Not bad. Uh, four hour RSI going to be actually if it could actually close up here, that actually be OK. Um, not really much of a signal over here, although some people might look at it as such. Uh, I would not take it. Uh, what about the hourly over here? Um, what is the hourly saying? Hourly is kind of coming down as well. So both hour and four hour are saying, yeah, we could have a little bit of a rally here. Um, where this rally likely go? Well, as we stated, about 6390 is your next kind of preliminary resistance. Again, just your daily 21. Jesus Christ, man, this chart is so convoluted. Uh, coming in right around, right, uh, right around here. But hey, going back to the one hour because I'm getting very sidetracked. Um, uh, hourly RSI is consolidating right here. So neither bullish nor bearish just kind of letting this one play itself through again you know where and where would that 6390 area be your hourly 200 exponential also your daily 21 so i really like that area for confluence if things were to start to you know uh tick up here that that'd be kind of like the next preliminary resistance i'd be looking for what about the three hour three hour stokes are actually they're they're, they're getting into the they're, they're getting above the uh, neutral zone right now so not bad what about eight hour over here eight hour are digging themselves as well what about 10 hour 10 hours, 10 hour actually just crossed, 10 hour just crossed. So I actually do put a lot of weight on that. And um, that would actually make me think that we probably do have a little bit of upside here. Uh, you know, taking another stab at 6390 wouldn't be too damn hard. So again, um, 
you know, I'm not, I'm not married to either which way. That's why I'm playing options right now. Cause it's, I can be, I can be gender, I can be direction neutral, like gender neutral. Um, but, but when it comes down to it, you know, there's, you know, it's, it's the, the ranges are so small to begin with. It's not really worth fucking with. Um, okay. So over here, this is where things start to get a lot, a little bit more interesting though, uh, because things have not really changed over here on the two day dildo time frame. We still have the death cross right over here. We have, and we have this nice rejection of the yellow 21 exponential on decent ish volume, I guess i mean i guess it's it is above the volume average but is it like you know super impressive not really um but again you know the more important thing is that you're rejecting the 21 exponential moving average you not both open and close a two-day dildo above this area you know for a couple months now so so you know you have the death cross over here you have you're kind of rejecting this area over here and as long as you're living below that 6400 level um you know directions directions down um so again you know that's that's one of those things where we only have one other example of this uh two-day dildo death cross happening in bitcoin's almost his uh, almost 10-year history right over here my god you can see myself get ahead of myself right over here but uh hey there you go right there the the, the green 55 crossing the downside the purple 200 uh you even gave it a test just like we did during the uh during the tether fud fucking hate that word the fud <laughs> it's so funny too man because i was uh, i was on twitter yesterday and someone posted a link to an exchange that I just uh, gotten through delisting about 70 coins and they're like it's just a bunch of fud it's like what the fuck <laughs> that's not fud man that's that's pretty real right there that's pretty real if they're delisting it that is a tangible thing that's actually happening that's not just like some fucking Jamie Dimon saying Bitcoin's a fraud it's like all right that doesn't even mean anything anyways it's like what the fuck <laughs> anyways um okay so so very similar price action is on the two-day dollar time frame as you had in tw uh, 2014 you know reject the you know you had the cross over here reject the test on the 55 and then you spent about a month and a half actually crawling your way alongside the yellow 21 exponential even closing a couple dildos above it but eventually being uh, shoved right back down um so again you know we have that same sort of setup over here you know you got the cross over here you're kind of crawling along this area over here but mainly being you know just you know just like shear it off the cliff so to say uh three day over here is very important to me as well three day over here is um is is very obviously getting rejected by the 21 exponential right here um you know we, you have that nice long wick to the upside right here not only the 21 exponential but you see the wick actually caught the top of this 200 simple moving average this red line right here and we have both opened and closed uh three day deals below this uh 200 simple one two three four five six and working on a seventh which will be confirmed later tonight at 8 p.m eastern time as long as you close this guy below 65 70 and a half on stamp so again um bitcoin's only bitcoin's almost uh, Bitcoin has only ever both opened and closed a three-day dildo below the 200 simple moving average, you know, in 2014. No other time in Bitcoin's 10-year, over 10-year history by now. Um, but, you know, as you can see, the purple 200 exponential, uh, that did get above price action in 2014 as well. We have not seen that in 2018, actually. Um, in fact, the purple 200 exponential, I put a lot more weight on. So while we are, while we are doing that for the first time on the simple moving average, um, I put a lot more weight on the exponential moving average. So if uh, if we were to both open and close a three day dildo below the 200 exponential moving average, then that would be the point where I start saying to myself, okay, uh, I actually would accept that over a break on a daily of 6,100 on heavy volume. So again, uh, you can see that the 200 exponential moving average actually got the accumulation period pretty damn well. You know, once you once you broke it, that was kind of <laughs> that was your tops, and once you broke it back to the upside, that was the beginning of your bull market phase actually. So again. Um, Bitcoin has been bouncing off this thing for the last like half year. We got one over here, two over here, three over here, four. If you want to call this five, six, seven, and we've come down uh, to it uh, an eighth time um, earlier, or I think just a couple of days ago. So again, um, it's obviously not in danger of both opening and closing one. You know, just right here, right now, it has to first close one below there. But uh, but hey, if uh, if today does close below sixty three hundred, well, I would be thinking to myself, okay, um, <laughs> now we are once again in that red alert situation but as you can see each and every bounce has bounced it every time you have not both opened and closed a dildo below it but uh you know this first bounce over here you know this was what um going from six thousand to eight thousand so two thousand dollars then this one was about one thousand dollars from top to bottom then this one was about five hundred dollars and this one this one right here was about two hundred fifty dollars if you go from from dildo body to dildo body which i do believe is the more uh is the more accurate way to be doing it as you know you want to be uh, you want to be understanding what the algorithms and the bots are kind of shuffling price action 
attention to at the end of the close as that's what as that's what they're programmed to do not necessarily you know show you what the wicks are doing because that's that's really just people getting liquidated around there and then this guy over here well we actually have had a bounce of about 125 dollars right from about a two sixty two fifty to what about 65 you know something like that um or sorry 60 uh 60 what was it 6400 or something like that yeah um if we're using again dildo bodies so again you know overall while it does keep on bouncing it you can see that each and every time it has gotten weaker so let's actually invert this and do something different right now um we haven't looked at this in a while but uh, i do believe that the inverted chart actually is working as something i mean you could certainly make the argument that this is an inverted or sorry uh this that this is an ascending triangle right here let's just put on let's just redo this whole thing so ugly there we go Okay, we have we have the up resistance right here at uh, 6100, and isn't that nice how it works like that? And then we'd have this guy over here, but it, it does that work? Hmm, you could make it work like this as well. The volume characteristics could work like that. Again, kind of having to squint my eyes. Someone brought this up yesterday, so I wanted to give it a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, love over here. Um, but uh, I'm not sure, you know, I, I'm kind of having to make a little bit uh, too many um, too many uh, what's it called? Uh, too many excuses for it so to say yeah so i would want to draw it like this and that would actually say that we actually got rejected from and we actually broke it out to the uh to to the downside which would be the upside on the regular charts um but hey you know if i draw it like this it doesn't really work for me right now so i just i kind of wanted to explore that idea um i don't i don't see it the volume cash risk could be you know it but then again I want to see the shape first so so that would actually be a little bit more um leaning on the other side Okay, so let's get back on over to um, GBDC. Let's see where GBDC, or no, no, sorry. Let's go to the weekly. We haven't looked at the weekly yet, and the weekly is very important because it's closing tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So we got the weekly right over here, uh, taking everything off, and let's throw on the 10 simple right over here. And there we go. And the and this is very important to me because as long as the weekly closes below 6440, uh, which is where the 10 simple moving average is, still pretty damn bearish. Uh, still pretty damn bearish. You, you'll notice that once we got this bearish engulfing dildo right here, we've not both opening. I mean, we've not even closed anything above this 10 simple in a long, you know, before then. Um, so again, you know, overall kind of an ugly chart, a very nasty exponential moving average cross right here, the yellow 21 to the downside of the green 55. And again, I'm very interested to see when we get the new weekly, do these moving averages can uh, converge or diverge? Because if they converge, well, that would be a little bit more bullish, obviously, if they diverge, which it looks like they, they're going to. This looks like they're going to diverge because it looks like they're getting momentum away from each other. And again, think of it as like a MACD histogram. You know, it's don't, you know, don't as anything else really i mean that's that's really all it is at the end of the day if they're gaining momentum away from each other well <laughs> then you got a situation over here like the only other time you've ever had that cross in bitcoin's 10-year history uh where you know you get the cross over here and then you go you know sideways for a couple months and then they really start diverging until you get to your ultimate red deal to capitulation death hole so again you know a lot of hours left in the day but if you were to end here or lower or, or really anywhere below 6440 it's really going to start to look like a rejection to me um again you know we have a rejection right here this would be another rejection right here uh, overall, it's, you know, it's how many tries do you get? How many licks to the center of the Tootsie Pop, right? So at the end of the day, I don't even know how that would even apply, but you don't want to know. Anyways, when it comes down to it, uh, blue 30 simple moving average right here, once again, slope to the downside, not something that I interpret it as good. Um, but Hey, you know, here's the thing, you know, as long as you're above 6150, I, I, you know, Bitcoin has been pretty resilient at these levels. It does look like it's getting weaker. It does. There are a lot of things aligning. If I was looking at my higher time frames, I would say that it's getting more and more likely. Um, but hey, until you actually break that, I'm not taking the trade. So that would be the difference between me and uh, other unnamed people in this space who might be analysts and they might be great analysts, but uh, perhaps they don't necessarily um, perhaps they don't necessarily uh, trade themselves. Anyways, um, that's not what I'm here to do. Jesus Christ, man, just talking shit today. You can tell that I'm very much underslept. Okay, so this, so this uh, red 10 simple moving average right here. On this is the, this is your monthly. This is once again angled very, very downly, slope to the downside, um, and uh, putting pressure on price action right over here. Now your monthly is giving you two looks right here. Your monthly is saying, hey. 
if you're going to play out a majorly bearish scenario, well, you're likely going to have that when your 21 exponential uh, moving average breaks right over here, which is where? 61.40. Oh, that's interesting that it's right around there, that major level that we just spoke about. And again, your 21 exponential moving average on your monthly delta time frame is very important um, for judging generally, you know, generally bullish or generally bearish. And again, with my background, where I come from as, an, as, a, as a mark maker in equity options, I would use those, I would use those time frames to judge, okay, is this stock generally bearish? Generally bullish? emotionally bearish and then kind of and then kind of work my way down um and you can see that Bitcoin actually does have plenty of information over here to go off of, plenty of history. And you'll notice that in 2014, that when Bitcoin actually did break this 21 exponential, that's when you really started, you know, getting into your, uh, getting into the last final phase. And when you broke it back to the upside, that's when you entered your, your Super Bowl phase. So again, overall, um, overall, you know, if, if Bitcoin did break it, I would think that you do get something very similar like that. The blue 30 simple moon average right here would turn, it would, would, kind of be like a magnet for price action that's coming in around 4700 um and the green 55 exponential would be in the cards as well if we go over here to the blx index you'll notice that bitcoin actually bottomed out perfectly on the green 55 exponential and that was actually the um and that's actually kind of the top of the past prior market cycle right over here so uh it doesn't mean that you always have to bottom at your at, at the top of your past prior market cycle uh bitcoin actually did not do that over on this one over here um although it's like you didn't really have too much information before and, and this one over here kind of well what so your bottom of this one was about 75 and, and a half and your your top of this one was about yeah about 30 okay so yeah it was, it was 30 dollars they were they were vastly uh far, further away from each other but hey you know um people who do people who don't think that it can't come down to like 1200 i mean it's it, it's not likely it's certainly not likely but uh it's certainly possible certainly possible um and you'll notice that each and every market cycle actually does get mm, I was going to say deeper, but no, this one throws it off right here. I'm wrong on that one. Yeah. Okay. So, so fair enough. Uh, by this, by the other, by the other token or the other side of the corner, whatever the fuck, you know, whatever the fuck that saying is, um, if Bitcoin were to go, go back above this, the high of this guy right over here around 8,000, I would become instantly extremely bullish, instantly extremely bullish. I know I said 10,000 to begin with on a daily, but uh, you know, looking at the monthly, I could say above 8,000, I'd become extremely bullish. Um, okay. So, Going back now over here uh, and bringing up our oscillators, you know, you can see that our monthly stokes are still there. They're still kind of uh, finding their uh, finding their way down, finding some comfort to the downside. Um, monthly RSI, not necessarily getting down all the way to um, to the neutral zone just yet. And I would think that that's probably where it does bottom, to be honest, if, if it were to break 6150. Um, Again, though, you know, that's that 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 would be secondary to just price action in general. Going over here to the month or sorry, the weekly, um, we can see that uh, the weekly RSI has actually found its way back into the bearish zone ever so slightly just by a fucking hair and a smidge. But it is there and it is living below this uh, this exponential right here. So, again, the only time that Bitcoin's really ever found some comfort below those levels in the bearish zone. Well, Again, 2014. So, uh, so, so to me, not necessarily the best look. We do have our 200 uh, exponential coming in around. Uh, what is that? That 4 4150 level right over there. Um, not only do we have the four, not, not only do we have the 200 exponential coming in right over there, we also have a nice horizontal coming in right there. We also have the 786 Fibonacci retracement coming in right around there. And why am I even talking about this? Well, if you were to break 6150, that's really where I start looking towards. You know, we also spoke about how the monthly has the 30 simple moving average at around, uh, I believe, it was 4700. You know, this would be kind of the range that I'd be looking for. So that would be certainly a tradable event in my opinion. Um, by the same token, you know, if I scroll this guy out and we look at the dotted 10-year logarithmic trend line right over here. That that is, and I've reworked this, and that and that would actually be coming in around um, current price action, actually right around this uh, this this kind of level as well, uh, at around forty three fifty ish area, um, you know, near that two hundred exponential, near these, uh, in kind of like in this zone of these uh, horizontals right here, and also seven eight six Fibonacci retracement. So again. A lot of things kind of pointing towards there. Um, if it were to take a tumble below 6,100, that's what I'd be looking for. Uh, by the same token, you know, at some point, this dotted 10-year logarithmic trend line will meet up with current price action. That would be actually around March of next year, middle of March next year. So if Bitcoin can hold it here for uh, about another five months, well, that would be pretty damn impressive. And perhaps it does, it does just does just kind of go sideways and then picks itself up and then lifts, lifts off lifts, lifts off once again. Now, of course, there could be lower targets, as you can see right over here. But uh, as uh, that's actually where you did bottom in your in your 2014 market cycle, the 886 Fibonacci retracement, which is not going to be on your default tool, but it is a Fibonacci number. Um, 
So, uh, so, so yeah, uh, you know, I do have that one plotted out as well. That would also be a 200 simple, I believe if we, if we throw this guy on, let's see. Yeah. Coming in right around that range as well. So again, when it comes down to it, you know, things could get like, uh, could, could, you know, could get worse than that, but t just take it one, one thing at a time. Don't want to scare anyone too much, but again, not trying to be Mr. Scary, trying to be Mr. Opportunity, you know, trying to be Mr. Opportunity because with perspective comes opportunity. And, uh, I think a lot of people are looking for something like, uh, looking for daddy backed to, uh, to, to save everyone. Uh, in like the coming, I don't know, weeks or so, or, or maybe it's next month, um, whenever it debuts, um, I would be very careful with that sort of mentality. Um, when, you know, I, I've just seen this thing, you know, too often. Um, so again, it's, it's one of those things. Anytime that I see an event, I get extremely skeptical. Events and, events and news do not change a market cycle. And this is something that I see a lot of people really... Um, struggle with intuitively and, and and i and i totally understand it too when i for, when i was first starting trading intuitively as well i would think that you know news would really would really make a huge difference not necessarily typically it's for it's for the professionals to kind of start to uh dump on the um on the uh, less informed, so to say. Um, so again, you know, do, do bear markets end with bullish news? Actually, no, they end when the last seller has sold. That's when a bear market ends. Um, and a bull market ends when the last buyer is bought, you know, and, and you guys saw that last, uh, at the end of last year, if you were around in, uh, in December of 2017. So again, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, we can talk about it. We can talk about all these different scenarios. I would really, be just cognizant of the big levels the big levels being about 6150 and i mean do i really don't consider this a big level but you know just because it's that overall downtrend resistance line it, it is going to come into play right around 6600 now um above there though the next the next levels that i really start to pay attention to is 7000 and 7350 yes i do have this guy right here but you know, it's it's going to be resistance. It, I, I think that if you break above this area over here, you probably you probably do get a free ride to seven thousand. Terrible thing to say, but just be <laughs> just I've seen it before. Um, okay. Uh, GBTC over here, GBTC, very nasty indeed. You know, getting, you know, never getting above our 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 our, our critical level over here, even have even after having a nice rally over here, uh, giving up the 21 exponential so damn easily, um, even on the first pass. Uh, island top reversal right here. Yes, you are kind of bouncing off of support right here. But uh, I mean, as long as you're bouncing off of it, it's fine. But uh, this, it does look like a, like you have pressure down right now. Um, I would be looking at that and uh, not necessarily be uh, bull. What are our oscillators say? Yeah, our, yeah, our daily stokes are are gonna are starting to get up there. So if they start to turn, that's not gonna look too good. Uh, daily RSI coming back to the bear zone. So let's see if it can bounce from there. Uh, typically, it does get a little bit of support around there, but um. As long as we're below that 21 exponential, I would lean to the downside. And I think that you probably do get another chance to uh, to sell that 21 exponential. Or Sorry, I mean, I think you probably get back to that 20 exponential, exponential whatever you want to do in that situation. You can do that. But we'll have to wait until tomorrow when they actually open up the regular markets. Um, okay, so back now over here to Bitcoin. We didn't look at Bitcoin's daily stokes, uh, which actually did just have a fresh cross down a couple days ago on the uh, 9th. So again, um, not necessarily the biggest fan of this uh, chart right here. Uh, let's go over to what else do we have to what else do we want to talk about? Did we talk about spies yet? What are spies likely to do this week? Um, <laughs> kind of similar to GBTC actually because it uh, but uh, probably go sideways a little bit. Um, probably test test again this 279 280 ish region overall though. Got to be bearish on, on some like this when when your monthly looks like this. Uh, major bearish divergence on your RSI getting below your exponential. Major bearish divergence on your Stokes and getting below the the critical zone crossing down as well. Don't like that. Um, what else do we have to look at? Man, I am fucking tired today. Let's go look at Mr. Buterol really quick. Mr. Buterol has an interesting weekly because Mr. Buterol's weekly does, I mean, <laughs> you tell me, what does that look like? Uh, if you're in the technical analysis program, you know exactly what that looks like. It looks like a shooting star kind of. Um, on Phoenix, it doesn't look as bad though. I should say that. On Phoenix, it doesn't look as bad. It just still looks like it's, I mean, and still, you know, on BitMexico, even though it does kind of look like that, even though it does look like that is what I should say. Um, you know, it's it's still in this formation right here. And yes, I did just have it uh, drawn like this. That was the right way to, that was the correct way to be drawing it. Then you get a, then you get a breakout technically above this area over here, but it's not that record, that's not that market shifting, market cycle changing breakout that, that you're looking for. I need to see volume like this guy over here. So we just redraw it and 
that's really the right way to be doing it. Uh, and your measure move, if you do break out to the upside, would you point, would be pointing you towards uh, 284. You'd have to get a daily dollar closing above about 220 ish area. And if it, and if you did close it to the downside below about, uh, on, on Finex, it's about 200 on BitMexico, It's about like 194. I think it is. Uh, then that actually be pointing you towards this next horizontal right here, which was huh, your spike low right over here, right around uh, 130, 130 ish area. Yeah. So again, um, not the biggest fan of this guy either. Another rejection from the top side of this uh, of this guy right here. Uh, but hey, as long as you're holding a 21, maybe you do pick it up. Uh, but the second that you close below 209 and 83 cents, I become a little bit more leaning to the bear camp on this guy as well. And you know that you know they they all kind of trade with each other, right? So. Again, when it comes down to it, not too much else to say about that. Uh, let's go check out. Let's go check out. Should we check out Ripple Me Timbers or no? Let's go check out uh, B Cash, uh, Bitcoin Cash. Um, okay, on let's go Stamp or Finex. Let's go Finex. Okay, so yeah, I've already charted this one out. So rejection over here on the red arrow. We we spoke about this. We 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 had this one charted out for a long time. Um, now operating between this this resistance at uh, 575 and this support right around uh, 533 does look like pressure down to me. Daily Stokes crossing to the downside. Four hour Stokes actually just freshly crossing up. Funnily enough. Um, but overall, you know, while you while you might fill out this area over here, I do think that you come back down and uh, base around this 520 ish area. Um, Let's see. What about a 12 hour as well? Yeah, 12. Yeah, 12 hour looks like they want to come down a little bit. 12 hour Stokes kind of getting heavy as well. So overall, um, you know, do you bounce out that next test on on five on 520? Probably. But if you do, if you do break that area, that's where things become a lot more uh, dire. As uh, if you do break 520, then the next the next area of support is right around 480 ish area. And this one is an event driven thing. Uh, they have some sort of a fort going on. So, uh, and I believe that's that's on the 15th, so four days. Um, so do be aware of that. Typically, again, you know, same you know same sort of mentality as as a future, same sort of mentality as a consensus, same sort of mentality as a fucking you know tax return, same sort of mentality as a Chinese New Year, same sort of mentality as, you know, insert fucking event here that's supposed to save Bitcoin and, and make everyone wish that they bought it at the bottom. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, if, if you do break this over, you're right, right over here. And, uh, and I'd imagine that that would happen, but that that would likely coincide with the actual fork, you know, I mean, just the, the event happening. Well, then the sellers come. Uh, so again, if that were to happen, um, if you do break 4, 480 though, that's that's where things get a little bit more interesting. Um, if you do break 480, that's going to destroy the structure. You're going to look at this as major hit and bearish divergence. Not my favorite thing to do, but hey, it is on a daily. So, or sorry, yeah, yeah, it is on a daily though. Um, so it is, you know, it is worth talking about. But overall, if you do break that area, um, looking for a lot more downside. Yes, you would have support right around 416, but I think that you're probably <laughs> you probably you'd very likely come back down there and if you break that well then it's just going to get even worse but again going to depend on whatever bitcoin does you know they all move together right so what is bitcoin likely to do in these uh in in these uh more short term um time frames right over here well again like we like we stated it's actually not quite clear um we have we have our lower time frame um, oscillator saying actually up right here, so they're actually suggesting up. Do we get another test of right uh, of around 6390, 6400? Yeah, very possible. Um, but as long as you're below there, not really not really a long trade to be had. If you break above there, above 6400, don't really see much stopping you from about 6450, 6440. But remember, that's also where your weekly uh, 10 simple is. So this is why I'm not really even trading the spot underlying except for a few scalps in here and there. Um, there's just not enough edge on these trades right now. That's why I'm trading options just so much easier on the fucking soul <laughs> can actually sleep at night it's great it's good except for last night did not sleep well last night as you can probably tell um but hey if uh if the opposite does happen and uh we uh, and we get rejected once again from about 63 60 ish area well i guess i must have made this on a four hour yeah i did make it on a four hour so yeah if the if the four i guess rejected from the 64 60 area once again yeah we probably come uh we probably do come back down to test 63 uh what is it 63 30 six, yeah about 63 30 on on bitmax co if that area fails then your next area is 6280 if that area fails and you got 6250 and if that area fails well that's where things get a little bit more interesting let's go check out the total mark cap really quick uh total mark cap over here again don't really think of this as a falling wedge or or descending triangle or anything like that. I think people are just trying to, you know, put their biases on this chart right here. Uh, to me, this looks like a failed breakout out of this symmetrical triangle. So again, another another formation that just, you know, not going to fucking work. This is why I don't like playing breakouts and also why I don't really like looking at the total mark cap. But again, um, as long as this thing is below about 250 billion, it's, you know, it's, I think it's still kind of uh, in the hurt phase. Um, 
by the same token, you know, if you do lose 200 billion, then that's more scary uh, from this uh, from this perspective. So yeah, let's go check out the longs and shorts really quick. Uh, longs over here, uh, 24 and a half thousand open longs on Finex. Um, most of those longs going up uh, on November 3rd, which price action was actually right around here. So those longs are either in a little bit of play or a little bit of pain or just break even. Um, and uh, shorts over here, twenty and a half thousand. So shorts, uh, bears have not been really interested in putting on positions here, apparently, according to Phoenix. But again, I don't put too much weight on this data anymore. I, I know that every fucking analyst on YouTube like loves to put on their charts because it looks cool, it looks sexy, it looks, it makes you look smart. But does it really? Does it have that much of an impact on the market anymore? I think I think I just think price action is more important, and especially when you have Bit Mexico doing most of the volume, most of the trading volume by by you know a good margin. Um, I don't know how much weight I put on it. Um, but you know, it, it is interesting stuff to look at. Uh, this, this, if I had to put an interpretation on this, I'd say, well, you know, you got bears who are completely, you know, they, they can, they can lock and load at any time that meaning they can throw on, you know, 10,000 coins, uh, to the short side at any time, uh, and bulls, they, they have plenty of dry ammo, but, but they do have some people underwater as well, about 5,000 coins underwater. Um, from that November 3rd date or just barely under or just barely in profit. Uh, so yeah, that's probably going to do it for this stream. Again, a nice Sunday morning, lazy Sunday morning as I struggle to keep my eyes open. But hey, I hope this one finds you well. And again, well, let's actually just talk about this for a second. Th this is a bear flag right here. <sighs> yeah, let's do the fucking magic pill. People love the magic pill. Okay. Um, okay, so so you got a bear flag right here, right? Uh, volume characteristics, characteristics work out. It does look like one, does does act like one, does smell like one. So it's probably one. You got a death cross right here on the hourly. You got a death cross right here on the two hour. Or is, do you? No, you don't just yet. It's well, uh, yeah, I guess I guess you technically do. Um, and the three hour is death cross as well. So all time frames are death crossed all the way up to a two, to, uh, all the way up to a three day. Three day is not death crossed um, on the exponentials, but uh, but yeah. Um, overall, what can I say about this guy? It looks like you do want to have another rally up to about 63.75 ish area, and that probably gets rejected. And uh, and if you do break this this kind of area right here, 63.50, then then heading back to about 63.30, uh, we could make a measure move off this guy. And eh, why not? Just fucking do it. Just fucking do it, man. And it would be pointing you all the way. Oh my God, to this hor to this horizontal right here. So perhaps you do make your way to 62.80. All right, I'll call it right now. 62.80 if this does get completed. But again, but again, we've seen you know, the good old Bart, the fucking Bart, the Bart, the, which I hate, I just hate that I use that term to begin with. It's so, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Um, but Hey, you know, you know, how would you know that you're getting a Bart? Well, if you do start closing some hourlies above about uh, 63, 80 ish area, then, then you got a Bart in your hands by the same token. If you close an hourly below about 63, 50, then I do believe that we'll probably see this measure move play out all the way to 62, 80, and that'll probably bounce it up. And then we'll figure out, uh, we'll figure out the next move from there. But overall, that's what I'd be looking for again, anything above 63, 80. And I look for a move to about 64, 30 64 40 um and anything below about 63.50 on an hourly deal to close i start to look for 62.80 all right guys that's going to do it for today i uh, hope this one finds you well hope that you have a nice day at good old goat jesus land and i'll be back on a little bit later to do some live streams some live analysis hopefully after a little bit of sleep and i will see you guys soon take care